Hi friends, I am Sam. Today we will be discussing about cardiac glycosides in pharmacology. So first of all, what are cardiac glycosides? These are drugs which are used to treat congestive heart failure. What is congestive heart failure? Congestive heart failure is a condition in which insufficiency of blood causes this case. Insufficiency in pumping of blood. The term congestion refers to any insufficiency or suffocation of item caused by surroundings. It might be fluid volume or anything else. These congestive heart failure can be classified into two types. First it's systolic and diastolic. This systolic and diastolic ultimately causes decrease in cardiac output. The reasons for systolic congestive heart failure are two types. One is dilation of ventricles and cardiomyopathies. What are cardiomyopathies? These are deformity in architecture of heart or heart muscles. And the reason for diastolic congestive heart failure is two, long-standing hypertension and ventricular hypertrophy. This ventricular hypertrophy ultimately leads to relaxation failure. Okay. Now we will be discussing about the goals of cardiac glycosides. There are two main goals of cardiac glycosides. One is reduction in symptom. So these are the symptoms. So reduction in this symptom causes ultimately causes increasing of cardiac output. So first of all, we should increase the force of contraction, decrease the fluid volume, which decreases the congestion of heart, and next decrease in blood pressure, which is the filling pressure of blood. At last decreasing the total peripheral resistance and the second major role of drugs are reducing the morbidity and slowing down the disease progression as we discussed cardiac glycosides now there are another classification cardiac stimulants there is one main reason why we don't use cardiac stimulants in case of congestive heart failure this cardiac glycosides have positive inotropic effect without oxygen demand without proportionately increasing the oxygen demand but in case of cardiac stimulants they have positive inotropic effect though they increase oxygen demand proportionately. That is why we don't use cardiac stimulants in case of cardiac glycosides. Okay. Now, what is inotropic effect? There are two terms. One is inotropic effect, another one is chronotropic effect. Both have positive and negative effects. Positive effect of inotropic effect is increase in force of contraction, and negative is decrease in force of contraction. And in case of chronotropic effect, its positive condition is increase in rate of contraction. And in negative condition, it's decrease in rate of contraction. Now, in order to understand about the cardiac glycosides action, we'll just study about the mechanism of action. So, here's typical structure of myofibril. First, there are two channels. One is sodium potassium ATPase one, and another one is NCX. Okay. So, what is the function of sodium potassium ATPase one? The main function is taking the potassium which is present extracellularly into the cell and sending out the sodium which is present intracellularly, sending them to the extracellular space. N next, in turn, again taking the sodium which is present extracellularly inside, which causes increase in sodium levels. Increase in sodium levels which triggers this NCX channel, which is an antipode, gets triggered only when there is increase or decrease in sodium levels. This increase or decrease in sodium level causes calcium to get moved out to the extracellular space. Now, what is the work of this sarcoplasmic reticulum? The intracellularly present calcium ions gets accumulated in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which in turn causes more systolic calcium, which in turn leads to increase in contraction of heart, ultimately increase in force of contraction. As already we discussed, thus increase in force of contraction results in increase in cardiac output in which symptoms are reduced. So ultimately the goal of cardiac glycosides is done. Priorly we were discussing about the main drugs which are used to treat congestive heart failure which are digoxin and digitoxin. Now we will be discussing about some other drugs of CHL. Firstly it's AC inhibitors which are captopril, enalapril, fosinopril, lisinopril, venopril and lamipril. These are also used for hypertensive disorders as antihypertensive drugs, but we will be discussing about later in other videos. And diuretics, which are bumetanide, furosemide, metalazone, and torsemide. So, then the main drug which is used as alternative for digoxin is dobutamide, which is a beta adrenoreceptor. Now, the main part, which are the side effects of these drugs. First of all, the side effects of AC inhibitors are dry cough. Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia is the condition of increased potassium level in the blood and fatigue, dizziness and headache. Now, side effects of diuretics which are headache, thirst and diarrhea. That's all for today. 
Thanks for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe to our channel. Thank you, friends.